Hello. Well, I do hate to be depressing at a time when I know many people are feeling depressed enough, but this is really something um, I should be talking about. And uh, it's part of the reason why I didn't make many videos last week, because I was doing some research into this. So <clears throat> it started when I was doing some research into you know, all these conspiracy theories about countries shutting things down. I'm going to get to that uh, in another video, probably. But uh, I, I then, for some reason, I started investigating TikTok. And having got into that, I, I came upon a whole load of other stuff, which I'm now going to put uh, before you. So a bit to start off with, and this has nothing to do with what's coming later, I want to say I maintain uh, I don't think China planned this coronavirus thing and I don't think it's a hoax either. But as I said, that's for another video. On the other hand, we have to be aware that China is a bigger threat, even bigger than some careless researcher in a virology institute. And we have to consider how that virus got into the wider world so easily. Not the original problem that got it out was why it spread. And the reason is, of course, because China had the World Health Organization in its pocket and could thereby keep the news out of the public forum. And we have to ask how a country that a few years ago was teetering on the edge of starvation is now so powerful that it can infect the whole world with a virus just by using political influence. And we also have to face the fact that the Chinese government, having subdued its own population, is now looking for other populations to subdue. Now, there are two possible reasons for this, and I rather think it's the second. But the first is that it could be because they want to spread the communist ideology. They are, after all, communists. But I think that's more a structural thing. Uh, no, I think it's more likely, but this is just my assessment, more likely to be because the Chinese remember how the countries of the West kicked it around for <clears throat> a couple of hundred years because the countries of the West had the power to do so. And China doesn't want ever to be in that position again. Whatever the reasons, China is going to do its best to dominate the world power structures and it's pursuing its goals with everything it has in its arsenal. And that's diplomatic, financial and military. So let's start with the military. China is the world's second biggest arms dealer. Here we are. This not only generates income, of course, but when people rely on a source for armaments, they're unlikely to be stroppy when China does something they don't like. So let's take a look at this. New research suggests China is now the world's second largest arms producer after the United States and ahead of Russia. And it's becoming less dependent on foreign weapons and military technology. OK. Now, so that's the arms issue. Now, you've probably heard of the Belt and Road Initiative as well. And um, this is why China is putting so much effort into the Belt and Road Initiative. Here's the Pacific Ocean. And America, as you see, it's sort of over here, uh, that in America dominates it. And this is the South China Sea here. Now, you can see it's ringed by all these islands. And many of them are places where America has... Um, at least influence, if not bases. 
there's uh, Taiwan here. You can see why China's so keen on getting Taiwan under its wing. And then there's the Philippines and even Australia. So if there was a conflict, not a war, just a standoff, a Chinese trade routes, you know, where all their boats are going out. Now, do I have a picture of... Oh, here we are. Uh, these are, you know, their trade routes out here. And its foreign currency depends on these trade routes. Uh, America could, could cut them off. So China's in the process of setting up a network of land and sea routes across Asia towards Europe from the east. Right, here we are. So here are the Chinese. Here's a, a map. You see there's China. And these uh, routes go all the way across here, uh, uh, across land. And then they're, they're, here they're busy building ports to, uh, for their ships to dock and dis uh, disgorge their goods or at least stop to refuel or whatever. And they're, they're, so they're building roads, railways and ports. And in many cases, uh, for cash-strapped and chaotic countries like Pakistan, for instance, uh, they are using the debt, because they're not giving these for free in, in most cases, they're using the debt to control the governments. As you will see from this map, it extends China's influence away from America, completely out of America's sphere of influence, but across a huge empire of the inhabited world with the, well, enough influence to isolate the Americas entirely. Now, here, look at this. This is a Portuguese page. And it celebrates a partnership between um, China, the Belt and Road Project, and Portugal's Fidelidade, which is a, an insurance company. Take a look at these glowing pictures up here in, the, uh, in this corner. Interest in Portuguese golden visa increases in Hong Kong. China uh, raised to establish a partnership with Portugal's you know, Chinese elite university, including a Portuguese, a Portuguese subject. China is launching Portuguese satellite. Um, well, China, capital airlines resume direct flights between China. But well, you can see all of that at the same time. We and it's not just Portugal, by the way. Uh, at the same time, we have people like the uh, Greta Thunberg group is trying to cripple our industries here in the West with nonsense carbonophobia, while China is actually building artificial islands in the South China Sea and creating enormous ecological damage, completely unnoticed by the aforementioned Greta Thunberg groupies. Again, the islands are part of a strategy to... Um, uh, protect Chinese shipping routes. All of those red flags there are coral reefs claimed by China and many marked out for island building. Now, some of them are actually submerged at certain times of the tide. They're not proper islands. They don't have water, for instance. Uh, they don't have any anything there. And so the idea is to build on top of them. It's a very ecologically delicate area. And so far, China has paved over about 22 square miles of coral, destroying around 10 percent of reefs in the uh, Spratly archipelago south of Hainan and uh, about 8 percent of the reefs in the Paracel Islands between Hainan and Vietnam. So far, They've used the territorial reach uh, to gain fishing rights in these areas. But then the uh, drag nets and stuff, that's not good for the coral reefs either. Uh, but they're also building landing strips and military outposts. So let's have a look at that. 
And this is in a magazine called The, the Diplomat. Are uh, China's South China Sea artificial islands militarily significant or useful? Uh, but uh, they are military significant. Uh, they refer to it here as uh, these facilities built on top of reclaimed land. It's not reclaimed land. It's uh, to reclaim something. You have to claim something that's uh, already been there. No, these are coral reefs like this here. And they just <clears throat> poured concrete over them. In a conflict, the capabilities on the Spratly outposts are more than just cannon fodder. They will contribute to Chinese firepower, situational awareness and logistics. Beijing is also well positioned to employ anti-ship and anti-air missiles on these facilities to deny access to the US Navy and other regional navies. And it's causing, as I said, it's causing havoc there, killing millions of hectares of corals and its associated life. So what do you hear of that on organs like CNN and the BBC? Well, so far as I know, the BBC has been running adverts for Huawei. And uh, you wonder why the BBC has produced a promotional video for Huawei with links to the Chinese government. Well, I don't suppose it's got anything to do with this, has it? BBC Studios strike content deal with China's Huawei. BBC Studios and China's Huawei video have struck a deal in which British TV content is supplied to Huawei customer mobile devices in 26 countries. The deal was announced to coincide with the launch of Huawei's P40 cell phone. That was in March. Um, and it's not just the BBC, of course. You'll be glad to know that various Chinese companies are helping, helping in telecommunications. And there's talk of them also involved in the nuclear industry. The nuclear industry, for Christ's sake, what is the government thinking of? Sorry about the strong language. And they're already in the universities, by the way. Until recently, there were about 100,000 Chinese students in Britain. And I happen to know that there's more than one university in this country, because uh, I've uh, spoken to colleagues. Uh, they're really in financial trouble now, uh, because there's a chance that the Chinese students won't be coming back in the autumn term. The universities have also had another source of income uh, from the Chinese, and this is something else that's bothering them. It's not only students, but there has been direct funding. And this has been for the establishment of what are called Confucius Institutes. They're, they're all over the place, uh, not just in Britain. They're supposed to be educational facilities to uh, widen knowledge of Chinese culture. But of course, they also serve of in, as instruments of indoctrination, as well as, um, now where do I have something here? Oh, here we are, on the Confucius Institutes. You know, some of the so-called students in there are also doing a little bit of technological spying. Hang on, do I have another one? No. Let's have a look at this. Open to the general public, Confucius Institutes promote Chinese language, but also run classes on culture from calligraphy and cooking to Tai Chi. They sponsor educational exchanges and hold public events and lectures. The first Confucius Institute opened in South Korea, and according to official data, there were 548 Confucius Institutes around the world by the end of last year, as well as 1,193 Confucius classrooms based in primary and secondary schools. Of course, this would also give students and uh, some education, let's put it that way, into uh, the current Chinese social setup and the 
advantages of the Chinese communist government. But though the, both the, the uh, Confucius Institute and the Chinese government deny it, critics say the CI rules essentially mean topics like Tibet, Taiwan and Tiananmen are considered off limits. Matt Schrader, a China analyst with the Alliance for Securing Democracy at the German Marshall Fund, never heard of that, asserts that the CIs are indeed propaganda tools. They are platforms for an authoritarian party that's fundamentally hostile to liberal ideas like free speech and free inquiry to propagate a state approved narrative. And since the Communist Party doesn't have a free press or rule of law to check its use of power, it's no surprise there have been strong indications that the CIs are used for inappropriate covert activities like intelligence gathering and facilitating military research. All right, it's not as if we were unaware of this. This article is from February 2020. And it says here, China is biggest espionage threat US faces. And that's from the FBI. The FBI has identified China as the biggest law enforcement threat to the United States. And its director said Beijing was seeking to steal American technology by any means necessary. FBI Director Christopher Wray told a conference on Thursday, the Bureau currently had about 1,000 investigations open into Chinese technology theft across its 56 regional offices and that it had arrested 24 people in 2019 in China related cases and had already arrested 19 people in 2020. Um, and here, oh, uh, in this article, I can't find it now. Oh, here we are. We have this um, comment from the on this BBC site. In recent weeks, a flurry of universities around the world have shut down programs operated by the Institute. And in Australia, an investigation is even underway into whether agreements between universities and the Institute have broken anti-foreign interference laws. Uh, but if you notice, uh, this BBC article is talking almost exclusively about Australia rather than Britain. But uh, other countries are also worrying about this. Here's one uh, from Sweden. Gutenberg acts his twin city agreement with Shanghai as Sweden closes all Confucius institutes. This has nothing to do with the coronavirus, but it has woken people up. So, despite Greta Thunberg and her stooges, even Sweden is getting a bit nervous. Have I depressed you enough? Well, here's something else for you to think about. And if you've made it to the end of this video, I congratulate you. Unfortunately, many of the people who really, really need to have got to this point won't have had the patience. I want to point something out, though, to the kids who think Thunberg is doing something about the state of the world. This here is a picture of a clamshell riddled with worms and surrounded by the rubble of a coral reef destroyed by Chinese chopper boats building artificial islands in the South China Sea. They're doing this all over the South China Sea. Think of that the next time you use TikTok, which is a Chinese company and which uses your phone to find out more about you. If you want to donate or contact, the information will be rolling over the Granny Opteryx as I speak. Please like, subscribe and share because it does help with the algorithm. If you visit my channel on YouTube and one day discover that I've disappeared without warning, you'll still find me on BitChute or Minds. Just go to either of those platforms and do a search for Granny Opteryx. If you're already watching this on BitChute or Minds, good for you.
Meanwhile, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember that you must keep checking the subscribe and bell icons because occasionally they reset. Till next time.